Let us now take a look at box plot. The function to create a box plot is just box plot. That's the name of the function. So here what we want to do is to create a box plot of auto dollar mpg and we want to control the x-axis label and also the color. Of course we could have avoided both of these and just said box plot auto dollar mpg and you would have got a box plot. I'm just showing you some additional capabilities here. So the x-axis label is going to be miles per gallon and the color of the box plot is going to be light gray. The result looks like this. Okay. Now the box plot, like the histogram, is a way of visualizing the distribution of values in a numeric variable. And there are many elements of a box plot that you should understand very well in order to get the full meaning of a box plot. So let's take a look at each of these components. First of all, there is a small box in the middle. Sometimes a box plot is also called as a box and whisker plot. You will shortly see why that is the case. Of course, there is a box. Okay, so here you see the box and then there are two whiskers on either end. That's why it's called as a box and whisker plot. And the middle line that you see here represents the median of our data. Of course, what that means is that if the data were sorted top to bottom or lowest to highest, the middle value is what the median is. So in this case, what we're seeing is the median is probably around 22 or so. Okay, if you extend this line to this axis, you will see that the median falls at about 22. So that's what the middle line represents. Then the one end, the lower end of the box represents the value at the 25th percentile, which is also called as the first quartile. In other words, if the values were sorted in ascending order from lowest to highest, the value at the 25th percentile, which is one quarter of the values will lie below that particular value, right? So if there were 100 values, then the 25th value will be here. If there were 500 values, then the 125th value would be there okay so in this case it looks like uh, this is falling at about 17 or 18 let's say 17 which means 25 percent of the values in that particular vector are below 17 that's what it means okay now uh, the upper end of the box represents likewise the 75th percentile which means three-fourth of the values are less than that particular value so it happens to be maybe about 28 or so. That's what it looks like. Okay. So those are, that is what the box represents. So obviously from this, you can see that the middle 50% of the values fall within the box. That is the values between the 25th and the 75th percentile, which is half of the values, the middle half of the values, they fall within the box. Okay. So you get an idea of the distribution of the middle values. So the, the range is sort of represented by these two whiskers. I say sort of because there's some subtlety to be explained there. So you can see that although the range extends from here to here, half the values fall in a fairly narrow range. That's what the box is telling us. This particular box is telling us. Now you could have a box which is a lot narrower, which means the middle 50% of the values are even closer together than what you're seeing here. Or you could have a box which is very wide, which means the middle 50% of the values are themselves quite widely dispersed. All of those are possible. Now, the difference between the 75th percentile and the 25th percentile is what is called as the IQR or interquartile range. Okay, that's what IQR is. So in this case, IQR is roughly 28 minus about whatever I said, 17, so about 11 perhaps. Okay, now the top whisker is third quartile plus 1.5 times the IQR. Okay, so this is the third quartile and then you do 1.5 times the IQR, that's the value, or the maximum whichever is smaller, right? So if it's possible that uh, if your maximum value in the data is less than the third quartile plus 1.5 IQR, then 
this whisker is going to simply represent the maximum value. On the other hand, if the maximum value is even above that, then this will be third quartile plus 1.5 IQR. And what you're seeing here, there's a dot outside of the whisker, that is what is an outlier. In this case, that represents actually the maximum value in the data. And because the maximum value is higher than even uh, the third quartile plus 1.5 IQR, that is shown as an outlier. Okay, so any value that is more than third quartile plus 1.5 IQR is considered as an outlier. In this case, there is only one outlier, so you see one point, but there could be many outliers, in which case you will see many circles. Similarly, the bottom whisker represents uh, the first quartile minus 1.5 IQR or min, if min is larger. Okay, in this case, since there is no outlier here, you can assume that this is actually the min and not first quartile minus 1.5 IQR. Okay, and of course you can see that this doesn't appear to be 1.5 times IQR below the first quartile. Clearly it's just about one IQR below. That is happening because the minimum value in the data set is itself not smaller than this particular number, one first quartile minus 1.5 IQR. Okay, so the two whiskers either represent the maximum and the minimum or they represent the 1.5 IQR below 25th or above the 75th percentiles. This is an outlier as we've already discussed. Okay, so in this case, min is larger. So this whisker represents the min. Okay, so let's just get uh, the important points. Okay, so here you see in this, but this is a different box plot. In this case, notice that there is no outlier either on top or on the bottom, which means that this whisker is really the maximum and this whisker is really the minimum. That is because the maximum is smaller than third quartile plus 1.5 IQR and minimum is larger than first quartile minus 1.5 IQR. So therefore, you don't see any outliers and the whiskers actually represent the minimum and the maximum. Okay. So again, just another uh, thing, description of the same thing, showing terminology. So this thing is called as the lower whisker, and you already know what it stands for. This is called the lower hinge. That's the upper hinge. That's the upper whisker. And of course, that is the outlier. Okay, so we've introduced two new terms. The whisker, representing these two uh, things at the extremes, bottom and the top, and hinge, which represent the ends of the boxes. Since uh, histograms and box plots both represent the distribution of a numeric variable, sometimes it might be useful to look at both of them together. And here I've just shown a histogram and a box plot. This time I've turned the box plot around and plotted it so that it's horizontal. Uh, and for the same data, we've got the histogram on top and the box plot at the bottom. Okay, so it's sometimes useful to, to look at both of them uh, one beside the other because after all they both represent the distribution of the variables okay the box plot highlights the distribution by quartile and the histogram highlights the distribution by binning the values now this is the code that I use to generate the top and bottom uh, charts uh, we won't get into the details of this code nor do you need to get into the details of this code uh, if you're interested you can take a look at this and if you have questions about it we can talk about that and here I just changed the number of bins on the histogram, that's all. Okay, so when we look at histograms, uh, it is possible for the data to be skewed in different ways. Okay, so if the histogram is completely symmetric, in which case the bill, bell is somewhat in the middle and everything else is evenly distributed to both sides. If the histogram is symmetric, then the mean and the median will be very close together, if not exactly the same, right? But many times histograms and distributions of data that we see are not symmetric, okay? So in this case, for example, the tail, there is a longer tail on the left, okay? So such a distribution is called, is said to be skewed to the left, 
That is, wherever the longer tail is, that's where we say the distribution is skewed. It is skewed to the left because it has a longer tail on the left. In these cases, the mean will be towards the side on which it is skewed. Okay? So in such cases, the mean will be generally, almost always, but not every single time. There are examples where the distribution can be skewed to the left and it is possible for the mean to actually be on the other side of the median, but most of the time, this is what you'll, you'll see. Okay? You'll see that the mean is less than the median if the distribution is skewed to the left, and if the distribution is skewed to the right, the mean will tend to be greater than the median. Okay? It's clear why this is happening. It's because more of the values are here, and we know that median is the middle value, and so it'll fall towards the side where most of the weight is.